you mentioned that in the last five years, especially the, the sport of jujitsu has grown and changed a lot. And I think we all we can all understand that. But from your from your perspective as a as a very active and a high level competitor, what what changes impacted you the most as an athlete that, that made you have to realize, man, I got to I got to get out. I got to start evolving and growing even more. Yeah, absolutely. 2017. Uh, so just that's only five years ago, right? Uh, you know, I came in to jujitsu with great wrestling base and that helped me uh, kind of uh, develop a little bit faster than you know you otherwise would have. Uh, but I didn't necessarily learn like the ins and outs of the escapes, like at that tournament 2016 Pan Ams that I, I crushed, you know, I submitted everybody uh, until I went to the open weight. Then I ran to Nicholas Marigale and he, he kind of, you know, tuned me up. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, 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 all I really had was a Toriando, uh, a snap down and a single. Like if you'd asked me to show a frame escape or a buck and roll or any of that, I wouldn't really have known much of that. So, you know, I got to the point in 2017 when I had a lot of uh, natural ability that would lean me to having success, but shoot, man, I got put in a bunch of leg locks in 2017. Like at the first trials, I got leg locked by a, a Florida boy, uh, Ian Murray. Uh, and then I got knee barred by Andre Sprinovoski. And then I got heel hooked by uh enrico coco a year after that so definitely the thing that i ran into uh, in that time was just not having competency in the leg locks and i think a lot of us that come from the og you know og jiu-jitsu schools uh it, it's been frowned down upon my entire career like i remember when i went from purple to brown belt uh looking at nogi worlds like the whole game changed because people were diving on toe holds and knee bars and i do think that you're taking away from your students if you don't introduce them to heel hooks toe holds knee bars uh you know the whole gambit of leg locks early on in their career uh, or else they're going to develop some bad habits and, you know, uh, or excuse me, they're going to not develop the proper habits that they need to because they're not getting exposed to it. So uh, that would probably be the biggest thing that affected me uh, in terms of uh, my early competition career, you know, but when I got my black belt, 2016, 17, 18. Uh, and then I'd probably say uh, recently in the past year or so, this uh, wrestling up phenomena, you know, uh, I think the world was introduced to it when Nikki Ryan uh, beat Dante. Uh, you know, he did some amazing techniques there that really uh, elucidated some uh, really uh, fundamental skills like that. The, uh, I was kind of made fun of in early on in jujitsu for wrestling up on people because that was normally what I do. I just pop up, grab a dog. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it was discouraged. It's like, no, 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 that's not it. You got to go for a sweep and triangle and arm bar and this traditional stuff. I'm like, oh, OK, so kind of worked away from that. Uh, but no, I think it's one of the most important skills you can have as a grappler is wrestling up. And, uh, I had success at the trials, uh, that I went to East coast. I only, I went two and one wasn't my best performance, but in the first match, uh, the guy swept me, I was playing from guard. I tried to entangle the legs. He pulled away, came up, took him down, got to his back. And so, you know, I think this wrestling up phenomena that we're seeing right now is really going to feed, uh, into the long, long run. And then also the other one is, uh, like a uh, cross body rider truck, you know, that's, uh, yeah, you, I was a leg rider in high school and college, uh, but I never utilized that specific technique that often. And uh, now I, I, I find it increment, uh, no, not incremental, but extremely important when you're taking the back now that you lock up that triangle. Because uh, if you just use the one leg like a cross body ride, they'll, they'll disentangle that. But if you're able to lock up, uh, you know, it's called the truck, I think is what some people call it. But that gives you a connection to the hip. And then from there, the back takes way easier. So uh, lots of skills like that. And then all the turtle stuff as well that I, I kind of just ignored ignored uh for the longest time i thought well it's just back exposure but now i'm of the opinion that you know uh somebody knows what they're doing from turtle probably has about as much combat effectiveness as somebody from seated guard like i, I think it is a very powerful position and uh you know i've been studying up on that you know gordon's uh, pillars of escape that's been a really enlightening video um and then as has nikki ryan's wrestle up i'd say those are uh two of the big ones. The one I'm taking a look at right now. Uh, and this also relates to the competition. I, uh, competition. I just had uh, at EBI. I, uh, had passed Alan Sanchez's guard, uh, and I got to mount, but, and, and I got his arm over his head, but he kept this guy, uh, he kept this frame in against my hip that just completely shut me down. And I, uh, didn't quite understand how to attack from the top pins as well as I guess I thought I did. And, uh, you know, John showed a couple of things that blew my dang mind uh, in terms of how you counter that inside frame. Cause I've always used my hands, you know, I've always used my, have that, you know, but no, it's all about turning their hips, like using your hip bone against theirs or using your legs against that frame. Uh, so some really interesting ideas that I've only just learned right now. And that was cause, you know, I, was in competition and I had this guy dead to rights, but you know, not, not enough. He had that frame and he was able to keep me away. And eventually he got in a dead orchard and gave me a real nasty arm bar. So, uh, it was a, a really good learning experience. That was in uh, Cancun about a month ago. Yeah. It was a, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Incredible. So that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's de- no, it's definitely like you said, man. I, I think you've done a, a tremendous job here highlighting all the technical advances that have been happening in jujitsu, or at least things that were that, that have they've always existed. It's just that people tended to, to shy away from them or not pay attention to them uh, as they should have been uh, over the years. And I think the big one, the big one, I think that, that everyone that comes to mind for everyone usually is going to be the leg locks. That's something yeah. that I'm with you 100, percent man. I never understood the demonization of leg locks in, in jiu-jitsu. I, I just never understood. It's like, you know, if you're attacking a part of the human anatomy and you're isolating the ligament and you're taking it beyond the breaking point, is that not the same thing as an arm bar or a kimura or anything else that we do? Um, and I also love that, you, that you're of the opinion that people should be learning them sooner. And I, I totally agree with that. I think that, you know, the same way that you, you would be cautious in teaching a white belt or a new someone new to jiu-jitsu a kimura, man, you show them the same dangers and risks and, 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 and safety precautions that you'd use for any other submission if you're teaching them leg like locks and i think and i do say i've been yeah. i've been reading uh, hickson's and sorry i cut you off there but I, i've no, been no. reading hickson gracie's uh, uh autobiography i think is what it is his yeah, uh breathe. Book breathe. yeah mm-hmm. and I, I think a lot of that has to do with like the luta livre and jujitsu split I, but I, i'm sure there's other stuff like i think there were a few things that happened in uh the first world's where I think a few people got put in heel hooks. I, I, you know, I, I really should know my history, but it's been a fascinating book. Like I didn't even uh, understand the Carlson Gracie and Gracie Academy split. Oh yeah. Uh, and so he explained it and, uh, yeah, yeah, it's an amazing book, man. I, I, uh, my, my host William had it here, uh, on, on the couch and I've uh, been getting into it and I, uh, yeah, definitely one of the better books I've ever read because I, I also uh, am real big on like breath work and whatnot. You know, trying to use your belly to breathe, not your chest. And uh, it took him like 80 pages to get into it. He had so many awesome stories to go through. But, uh, you know, he's finally now in the bottom of 80 pages in and he's finally starting to talk about, you know, using the breath, nose breathing in the belly and, you know, uh, bringing up a lot of really good points. So, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm not up to date on my jujitsu history. I really, you know, I really should know this stuff cold. <laughs> oh, it's all good. No, but, I mean, the fact that you're reading is awesome. I actually haven't read Hickson's book yet. I, I've got it ordered. Uh, but I read uh, the Carlos Gracie autobiography by uh, by Hala. His daughter, Hodger Gracie's mom wrote the book. And uh, boy, that was an eye opener too. He talked a lot. They talked about a lot about the Carlson split and how basically Carlson was like training non Gracies to beat Gracies in tournaments and stuff, which was pretty crazy. And yeah. Uh, it, it's a yeah, great, great, very interesting history in jujitsu. And it was nice reading yeah. it from, from a perspective that didn't have a particular um, position or, or, or agenda within 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 the the marketing side and the in the business side of jiu-jitsu it's nice to just hear someone reading about you know, newspaper clips and personal accounts that, that didn't seem biased because the way that Hodger's mom laid everything out it felt very centered felt very just honest opinions about her dad honest mm-hmm. opinions about different members of the family and just how it went so uh, yeah. really cool stuff man it's awesome that you're reading that you know uh, getting back to, to, to more of the, the technical talk here you were talking yeah. about how um, aside from leg locks wrestling up is something that's really mm-hmm. big uh, in jujitsu now, that's something that I've been having a lot of fun with uh, developing yeah, in my own you. game. Uh, it's something that it's something that I was doing a lot from butterfly guard as a purple belt, and mm-hmm. uh, and and I'd catch people to my surprise by all of a sudden just springing forward and getting a body fold or like a, a body lock on them, and uh, and and, it was, and it's been cool seeing it like you know really becoming a, an important facet of jujitsu. With your background as an all American wrestler, I imagine that's got to be one of the easiest things for you to develop mm-hmm. from here. Yeah. Uh, that's probably something yeah. you've naturally been doing for a while, huh? Yeah, yeah, naturally. But I'd say uh, you have to watch Dickie's DVD on it. Probably the biggest thing that. I would take away from it. I think other people should take away from it um, is like setting a grip with your hand first. Then you have to adjust your feet. So probably the biggest mistake I've ever made on wrestling up is not shifting my feet uh, so that you can actually, as they pull away from you, your connection brings you to them. But if you have a foot propped in against the floor, that's a brace that's keeping you separated from them. So you need to set your first grip, shift your feet. And then from there, set your second grip and you want to use their backward motion to pull you into them. Um, which I never really even thought of that, like uh, idea of like getting a, a lower a grip on their lower body, and then as they pull it away, you use that to keep yourself connected to them. That's awesome. Uh, but- yeah, 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 yeah. It's because uh, I've done it naturally, but I never really thought. And also, like, there are three positions for your feet, too. Like, you can cross them. Uh, you can put both feet on one side. Or you can, there's one other that he, he brought in. But I, I thought it may have been a masterpiece of a product. And uh, definitely uh, uh, that idea of, like, an upper body grip shifting your feet and then your second grip, I, I, I think has fundamentally changed how I try to wrestle up and led to a lot more success and a lot more fun. 